This video is a quick overview of how to set up and play the multiplayer mode for Mineburners. I'll walk you through the main basics here, but be sure to read the full rules for more nuanced details and information on solo play. So, Mineburners is a cyber occult dungeon runner game for 1 to 4 players. As void runners, players must push their luck and enter the void to gather resources, thwart their opponents, and seal the breach, closing the void forever. The goal of the game is to be the first void runner to collect 10 victory points. But the unpredictability of your opponents and the ever-shifting void itself presents interesting decisions to make and challenging obstacles to overcome every step of the way. Let's dive right into setup. First, give each player a hit point and stored energy tracking card, a victory point tracking card, one tracking cube of each color, and a player token. Then, slide the victory point card beneath the hit point stored energy card so that the victory point tracking section is revealed, but the overcharged square and text is covered. Each player begins every run with 5 hit points. They also begin the game with 0 victory points and 5 stored energy. Place the corresponding tracking cubes on each track accordingly. Next, shuffle the 12 roll event cards and set them aside with the 6-sided dice to create the roll event deck, leaving room for a discard pile. Then shuffle the 10 Void Event cards to create the Void Event deck. And finally, shuffle the 24 Ability cards and create the Ability deck, leaving room for a discard pile. And that's it for basic setup. Let's move on to how to play. A game of Mind Burners plays out across multiple Void runs where each player attempts to strategize, push their luck, and survive as long as possible. Ideally, reaching the end of the Void run by successfully clearing all 10 Void cards while you're still alive to gain extra victory points. Each round of play has two phases, the preparation phase and the running the void phase. Here's a look at what those entail. First, we have the preparation phase. Before the start of each void run, everyone starts by resetting their hit points to five. And then each player draws enough ability cards so that they have a three card hand. So once hit points are reset and everybody has their ability cards, each player may take any of the following optional actions if they choose before the run begins. First, you can temporarily increase your hit points by spending two stored energy for each hit point gained up to a maximum of 10 hit points. And this boost only lasts for the current run. Then, you could potentially draw up to two additional ability cards by spending one hit point per card drawn. You can also overcharge by spending 10 stored energy and when you overcharge, slide the victory point card upwards to reveal the orange overcharged benefits text. While you're overcharged, you start each run with 6 hit points instead of 5, and you also draw up to a 4th ability card during the preparation phase when players refresh their hands. And then as a 4th optional action you can take, you can play any ability cards that have a circled P symbol below their ability cost, if you have the required stored energy to do so. So when preparations are complete and all players are ready, the void run begins. All right, let's look at running the void, which is where most of the action happens in this game. Start by placing the shuffled void deck between all players. Then draw the top card and place it face down next to the deck. Now place each player's token next to this card, indicating their position in the void, and then the run begins. Flip over and reveal the first void event card. All players must resolve this initial card before proceeding. Now, before we go any further on this run, I want to briefly go over the three types of cards you're going to see in the 10 card void event deck. The first type of card is creatures. When a creature is revealed, all players immediately take the indicated damage unless it can be prevented by playing an ability. And once that's resolved, the creature is then considered defeated. And you'll see there are six creatures in the void deck, two of each damage strength. The next Void card is Void Beacons. These are very simple. When you reveal one, all players who are still in the Void immediately gain one victory point. And then the third type of Void card is the Chance Matrix. When you reveal a Chance Matrix, a Roll Event card is drawn, and each player rolls the six-sided dice to determine how they are affected by the event. And those are the three types of Void cards you're going to find, so let's get back to the run. So we're going to reveal the first Void card and resolve it. In this case, it's a creature, so all players would take 1 damage immediately unless they want to play an ability in their hand that could prevent that. And once the first Void card is resolved, we're going to draw a new Void Event card and place it face down next to the previous one. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. 
before the next void card is flipped over and revealed, each player that is still alive must then decide if they want to push their luck and continue the run, or leave the void while they're still alive and gain some additional benefits of doing so. Players that choose to leave the void must keep their tokens next to the current void event card that they are on. Players that choose to continue the run must move their tokens next to the new card about to be revealed. Once all players have made their decision, the next void card is revealed and resolved. This process continues until all players are either dead, have left the void by choice or by force, or have successfully survived and resolved the entire 10 card void event deck. Now, things resolve a little bit differently depending on whether you're still alive when you leave the void, whether you're killed, or whether you actually clear the entire 10 card void. Let me explain how that works real quick. So if a player exits the void while they remain alive, they leave their token on the current void event card like I mentioned. And once the rest of the void run is complete, any player who chose to leave the void while they're still alive gains one stored energy for every card they successfully cleared during that run, including the card their token is on. This also applies if a player is forcibly ejected from the void while they're alive. If you have any ability cards left in your hand this time, you may choose to keep one card to carry over into the next run, but the rest must be discarded. And then you also gain extra stored energy equal to the ability cost of all cards you choose to discard at the end of a run, if you're still alive when you leave the void. So those are some of the potential benefits of choosing to leave the void before you push your luck a little bit too far. But what about dying in the void? Any player whose hit points drops to zero dies. Their body rematerializes outside of the void unless they can play an ability that allows them to prevent damage or somehow remain alive. When a player dies and death cannot be prevented, immediately remove their token from the void. They do not gain any stored energy for that run, and they must discard any remaining ability cards in their hand. These discarded cards also do not gain them any additional stored energy, and overcharge is removed when you die as well. But there is some good news, you do keep any victor points you've accumulated during that run, even if you die. So what happens if you're able to clear all 10 void cards successfully without dying? If you can make it to the end of the full 10 card void run and resolve the last card without dying, you gain all of the perks of leaving the void alive, plus you also gain two extra victory points. All right, so once the current void run is over and all living players have banked their energy and everything else is resolved, you're going to remove all the tokens, reshuffle the void event deck, and return to the preparation phase to get ready for a new run. You'll keep running the void using this cycle until a player reaches 10 victory points, which triggers the end of the game. I also want to note, however, that the void event deck is the only deck that's reshuffled every single round. The other decks should only be reshuffled when they actually run out. So that's the general flow of the game and the core mechanics. But there's one extra ingredient that adds a lot of spice and a bit of craziness to the mix, and that's the abilities. In Mind Burners, abilities do lots of different things, from helping you to avoid damage and letting you take a look at certain cards that are coming up in the void to help make your decisions, to also potentially damaging other players or messing with their run in different ways. Ability cards that are marked with the circular P symbol can be played during the preparation phase or while you're running the void, but all other abilities can only be played during the void run phase. To trigger an ability, a player must have enough stored energy to fulfill the energy cost unless that ability has no cost to play. Once triggered, used, and resolved, ability cards are discarded, so you can only use each one once per run. The other important thing to note here is that abilities are resolved in the reverse order that they're played in. Here's a real quick example of kind of what that might look like. So let's say Sarah plays a life shot ability targeted at Bobby, which would deal two damage to him. But Bobby decides to try to prevent this by playing Spectral Shove, which would force all other players to leave the void. Jim, however, doesn't really like that idea so much because he's been having a really good run. So he then plays Paralytic Gaze on Bobby's Spectral Shove. And because abilities resolve in reverse order when multiple players are stacking them like this, the order that they're played in really does count. So here's how this scenario would resolve. Jim's Paralytic Gaze ability, which is played last, would trigger first. And that would negate Bobby's Spectral Shove which means nobody would be forced to leave the void. And Sarah's life shot ability would then still trigger, dealing one damage to her and two to Bobby. So that's how the flow of these abilities resolve when you get into these kind of scenarios where they're stacking like that. 
And really, that's Mind Burners in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching.